guys, it's Kelly Lanavola and I'm back with another video for Spellbinders. Today I'm going to be using a couple of different um, stamp and die sets, uh, Rough Waters, A Rose by Any Other Name, and Wanderlust. So this is a different kind of card for me, which is one of the reasons why I love working with Spellbinders so much, um, because it gives me an opportunity to kind of have a play with things I wouldn't normally use. Totally drawn to the design in the um, Inked Messages series. I just think that they're beautiful, but the actual design of the card is what's different for me. So I'm using um, Antique Linen Distress Oxide to stamp a background. This um, earth with the, the flowers, I just did it in a um, pattern to create a background. Um, I really liked kind of that vanilla look on the white, even though I, I typically go for you know black, white, and bright colors. Um, sometimes doing something a little bit more subdued can be really pretty. So um, I remember back when Distress Inks first came out, it was like a huge thing to kind of quote unquote distress the edges. Um, so that's what I did. I just used what was left over on my ink blender to kind of go around the edges to make the, um, the pattern on the edges a little bit more um, subdued, like so not in your face. Here, when I started stamping out my images, I had um, stamped them on a scrap piece and I didn't realize that I didn't clean off my anchor. So you can see here that um, I just had to drop it and wherever it landed, it landed so I could stamp on top of it. It ended up working out fine. I am stamping in um, Copic Safe ink because I am going to be doing Copic coloring. So this is where I guess a little bit more of those, um, that color palette comes in. Uh, it is like, we're toward the end of summer, so we're going to be heading into fall, which is where you're typically you find your more subdued colors. And all that really means is um, it's just not as bright. The tone, um, the tone of the colors or the saturation of the colors is not as bright. Um, coloring the anchor, I obviously went with um, gray. That's what most of them are, like steel. Um, and so I'm just adding shading where the lines are already in there. So Stephanie Lowe is the illustrator for this particular um, line of stamps. And she does an awesome job at kind of telling you where your shading should go. So as long as you just follow those lines that are already in there, you're pretty much going to be like rock star coloring. I um, just uh, literally just followed her lines. And some of the times I was using just the tip of the marker and flicking out if the lines were extended. And sometimes like in the middle of the anchor where the lines are very short, I just drew a line over them and then used the lighter colors to flick them out. My darkest color is going to be a C7. And I added very minimal amounts of that, just enough to kind of bump up the contrast and give this anchor some dimension. So back to this color palette. Um, I'm like all year round, I want the bright colors. Like I want, that's just what I want. It makes me happy. Um, but I do think that there's something really beautiful about being able to play um, with, you know, your maybe your jewel tones or things like that. So I stamped the background in the antique linen, and then I went hunting for other colors that I would like with it. Um, there's a couple of different ways to do that. Sometimes you can just pull out the markers that you own and um, just kind of play with them on a scrap piece of paper. Um, the way that I do it is I have a board on my Pinterest, which you're more than welcome to go check out, called Fabulous Color Combos. And they're color combinations that I have seen um, or I've seen in other people's work that I really, really love. And then I pin them. And then when I want to try something different, I can just go back there. Um, or you can just search on Pinterest. Um, so for this one, just to make sure something would come up, I actually typed in color combinations tan and and then I left it blank because then Pinterest will kind of auto populate that and and finish my sentence for me. So when it's searching, it's looking for that tan and um, and that works really, really well. And in doing that, I was able to find a um, kind of like a darker rose or a darker mauve color, uh, teal, tan and um, like a light gray. And that was totally perfect for this card. So yay, it totally worked out. Um, in doing the coloring of the rope, because it's braided, there's going to be a lot of lighter and darker areas. Um, I would caution you to just make sure you're leaving some light areas. It's very easy when something is this tiny to go in there and get heavy handed with the darks. 
let me just apologize I have no idea what was going on with my camera there for a second it got a little bit blurry um but anyway so just you know going through and um doing you know just the little lines uh where she's already put them in and you don't have to get crazy with the dark colors adding just a little bit of dark will give you um some dimension coated the whole thing with the a, another layer of the lightest color and then i moved on to my pinks you'll notice with the pinks that the colors that i picked aren't necessarily a family and a lot of times the colors that i pick aren't necessarily a family they don't have to be Copic sells them, um, you know, in these color families. But a lot of times, if you're looking for more dimensional or more contrasting color, the colors that are in the families aren't far away enough from each other for you to get any real contrast. And then I think um, a lot of times people buy them thinking that they're like, oh, I have a light, a medium, and a dark, and I should get, you know, great dimension. But then the colors are too close together and you don't. So I started with an RV11 and then went to an RV55 and then the 66 and the 69 are actually part of a family, but they're far enough away from each other that you can get decent contrast. I'm going to use the same pinks to color up this rose. Um, I don't, I love this rose so much. I'm just such, I'm such a floral girl. Um, like since I've moved into my new house, like no joke, I have bought myself flowers um, just to have in my house, just to, to look at. I had all of these vases. Um, and now they all sit on top of my cupboards because I ain't got a lot of storage space. Am I the only one who has that problem? Like, it just seems like no matter where I live, I do not have enough storage space, which may mean I'm a hoarder and need to get rid of things. I'm not really positive. But anyway, so I have, like, all these really pretty vases, and then I never have flowers. So, like, when I go to the... <laughs> I don't even go to a florist. I'm, like, I'm that girl. So when I go to the grocery store and they have, like, the little floral section... I usually just look for the bouquet that's like marked down to five dollars and then I buy that for myself and I put them in my house and they last a couple of weeks and I'm super happy to look at them because the only flowers that I have in my yard are hollyhocks um, and they don't make great vase flowers they just don't um, and plus I got a lot of bees back there and even though I have a I'm, I have a paralyzing fear of bees um, I don't know. I, I think it's from when I was little and there was a little boy who put a bee in my hair and I've always had long hair and it was, I got stung. It was a disaster. Anyway, he was a mean child. Um, but I am still all about saving the bees because I'm all about the oxygen that I breathe and surviving. So don't kill, don't kill the bees. Um, back to the coloring of this flower <laughs> since I'm just like rambling along. Um, basically I'm just adding shading to the base of the petals from the rose. I'm being very careful even on the tiniest of um, petals to make sure that I leave a highlight because when you have flowers like this that bloom out and there's a lot of little petals inside, if you don't leave those light areas, it's going to look super blobby and you're not going to be happy with the way that it, it comes out. So um, I'm, I'm working from lightest to darkest and then darkest to lightest. So I'm on the darkest color right now. And there's some where the, the petals are like curled up and over. They'll also get shading underneath there. Anywhere a petal's laying on top of another petal, they'll be shading there. Um, and then definitely on the inside. On the inside, don't worry about being perfect. Well, don't worry about being perfect, period. Nobody's cards are perfect. My cards aren't perfect. Um, but don't worry so much about like getting the shading exactly where it needs to go. As long as in the center there are darker and lighter areas, you're still going to be good. Like it's still going to be fine. So working out to that lightest color, and you can see even though I'm spreading out the color, there's still um, a lot of areas that are, you know, still have white on them because I haven't gotten to that lightest color yet. So you could totally leave them white, like if that's the look you were going for, like a pink and white rose, which would be uh, amazing. Um, but I wanted them to be pink. I know I have a lot going on in this card. I'm actually going to color up two of these roses. I stamped the other little flower um, that came in the uh, Rough Waters set, and I ended up, color I did color them. You'll see it eventually. I colored them like a golden yellow because I thought that would be really pretty, uh, but then I just didn't have enough room in my layout. So I just, you know, I've already colored them and die cut them out, so I just set them aside and I'll use them on another project. Uh, no harm, no foul. They're already done, right? So it'll just make it easier to do it another time. For the um, leaves here, I chose, um, like I told you when I looked up that color palette, um, 
and had the teal in it, which I really liked. So that's the color that I'm doing my uh, leaves in. I love, um, I just love teal. I think it's super pretty. <laughs> um, so doing the leaves, uh, I actually, I went out, I, ch I chose three, and I don't know why I do this to myself, because I know it's never going to be enough contrast and I'm not going to be happy with it, um, but that's just my personal preference. Three color blend is normally A-OK, -okay. like you're, you're good in a three color blend, but because I had that super dark RV69 in the flower, I was leaving my leaves feeling a little lackluster. So after the fact, and I apologize because I don't think I caught it on camera, I went in with a B99, uh, so a navy, and added um, just a little bit of darkness to, like, what does Kathy Rickusen call them? The nooks and crannies. So just a little bit of darkness. In order to kind of bolster up that highlight and really separate out my rose, I'm using a white gel pen to just uh, add a little bit of white to the edges, like the tips of the petals. And then I like to outline all of my images. You guys watch my videos, you know this. Um, this isn't something that you have to do, but if you're going to do it, do it before you do the die cutting. Otherwise, you're going to be chasing these things around all over your desk trying to outline them, and it's a nightmare. I have, <laughs> I have forgotten that step because I was so excited to build the card more than once, um, and it's awful. So I went through and die cut out all of my pieces parts, and then I'm going to, for the sentiment, which also has a die, which I is not typical and I totally love because it makes it so easy um, to like arrange your design. So I have some black cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. I am treated it with my uh, embossing bag anti-static tool. And then I'm stamping in Versamark ink. I totally adore this sentiment. It says, um, calm seas don't make for skilled sailors. Um, and that's so true, like especially being at the point that I am in my life um, where it things have been hard and a little bit of a struggle. Um, that's true. Like I, the way that I feel is like this is the point, the adversity, the hard things is where God refines you. And so if you I try to look at it that way so it makes it a little bit more bearable, like at the end of this, there's going to be light at the end of the tunnel going to come out of of it um, a stronger, better version of myself. So here I just put some Tombow Mono Multi Glue on the back of that anchor. Um, it dries repositionable if you let it dry before you stick it down so that I could kind of arrange these how I wanted them to look. And then I am adhering my roses down flat. So using that Tombow Mono Multi Glue wet, which will make it permanent. And then I'm gonna go ahead and once I have them where I want them, I'm gonna pop that anchor back off and I'm going to use some uh, scotch foam tape on the back of it. Um, I just, I really love the color palette, even though it's not my normal go-to, it feels almost kind of Victorian, which um, which is really pretty. I'm, I'm actually really happy with it. Um, so it's worth sometimes going outside of your comfort zone to see what you can get. So originally I put just one layer of foam tape on the back of this sentiment. Um, but then I realized that I kind of wanted it to overhang my anchor a little bit. I wanted it to be up higher to balance out that design a little bit better. So I ended up having to add just one more layer on the right hand side, not over everything because I have foam underneath the anchor already. So the foam behind the sentiment is making it a double layer. I just need to add a double layer later. That's not a thing what layer to the side that's on the right um, so that it will make everything flush and fit really nicely so doing that and then I'm going to stick that down pretty much the only other thing that I did um, for this card was put the glitters on it because you know I'm all about them glitters and so I just used a glitter pen and hit up the anchor and then the roses as well because I want them to be super shiny. And then that is the whole card. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that maybe you'll play a little bit with your color palettes. And um, I will catch you on the next video. Bye.